Okay, let's focus on our next question. Question three is geographical skills and techniques. Obviously, we're going to discuss some GIS as well. Now, please pay attention, grade 12. When they provide you with the map, they will always, it will follow us with some instructions about the certain place. Now, for instance, our map details is on a place called Maryvale. Okay, as you can see, it's in Kuzulu Natal, and there's some content that will be covered just to give you a background information about the place, about the map that was given to you. Now, as you can see, Maryvale is a town in Kuzulu Natal. 145 kilometers northwest of Durban and 5 kilometers southeast of Howick. And just some climate information about the region. Now, as you can see, Maryvale experienced warm, wet summers and dry winters. So it's summer rainfall. And if you look at the temperature range, the summer temperature range is between 5 and 32 degrees Celsius. The topography with the surroundings of Maryvale. It's got an elevation of 1,018 meters to 2,308 meters above sea level. So this is the information that will, will be given to you with the map. Now, if you look at the maps that's been provided from last year's exam, first and foremost, pay attention, we have our topographical map with a scale of 1 to 50,000. Now, what does it mean, grade 12s? 1 to 50,000, it means the map has been reduced 50,000 times. One centimeter represents 50,000 centimeters. Okay, another set of information that we can concentrate on is the map code, right? The 29 means latitude. The 30 is longitude. And C will be big block. and A will be small block. Some revision on the map book that we've covered in grade 10 and 11. Now, if you quickly pay attention, you can see the latitudinal position is 29 degrees, the longitudinal position is 30 degrees. Okay, and as you can see, we have a beautiful map of Maryvale. There you can see the Midmar Dam. Many of you will know this dam because you go and swim the Midmar Mile, usually in February, March with your schools. Just pay attention to the area where the water photo has been taken. We'll go to the water photo in a minute. So this red line demarcated area shows the water photo map. So let's just quickly jump to the water photo. There you can see there's the water photo. I've just shown you where the water photo has been taken. Right, once again, pay attention to your map scale. Right, one to 10,000, same concept as a topographical map, the map's been reduced 10,000 times. Great Charles, please do me a favor, pay attention to the question and see from which map the question is. So do you don't make a mistake by answering the question from the wrong map. Okay, keep that in mind, very important. So that's our autophoto map. Okay, let's Jump straight into our questions quickly. Okay, I just want to go one back. Now, first of all, if you look at our first question, uh, it's map skills. 3.1.1. Study the information below. The autophoto map index sheet was 2930CA5. Now, the question is, we need to provide the sheet west of it. Now, keep in mind, grade 12s, that north will always be on top. So this is quite straightforward. You identify the index west of Maryvale, and that will be the correct answer. 2930 CA4. And let's see if they give us the option, and that's the correct answer. The correct answer will be B. Very simple, remember, North is on top, east, south, west is general direction and is very able to, easy to determine where it is and that will be the correct index. Now if you look at our next question, okay, once again they're testing us, going back to grade 10, learning the basics. The scale of 1 to 50,000 shows a larger, smaller, less or more area. Okay, let's just quickly 
than the 1 to 10,000 map. Now, definitely the correct answer is larger. I just want to go back to our two maps. Now, remember, this is the 1 to 50,000 map. As you can see, it shows a much larger area. Now, if you look at the area of the autophoto map, this whole autophoto fits into that red square over there. So the correct answer is definitely larger. And so larger is the correct answer area. And now they asked, is the detail smaller scale than 1 to 10,000? Uh, 10, and the correct answer is less detail. Because I've mentioned it earlier, right? Topographical maps been reduced 50,000 times. The autophoto map only 10,000 times. So the correct answer over there will be A. Okay, let's quickly move on to our next question. And our next question states to go and calculate the straight line distance in meters that the power line covers from 6 and block B3 to 7 and block C5. Now we need to go and identify where do we find 6 and 7. And they've even given us the blocks. Okay, so we need to calculate the distance in meters. Now very importantly, because we're working with two different maps, remember, 1 to 50,000 maps got different formulas than a 1 to 10,000 map. Now on a 1 to 50,000 map, if I want my answer in kilometers, I times my centimeters with 0,5 to get my answer in kilometers. If I want my answer in meters, I times it with 500. And we'll get our answer in meters. If the question is being asked on the autophoto map, to get a calculation to get your answer in kilometers, you times it with 0 0,1. And if you want your answers in meters, you need to calculate it with 100. But now we need to figure out where this power line is from 6 to 7. So let's just quickly go back to our, there's our autophoto. Okay, so immediately I can identify 6 and I can identify 7. And there's the power line, as you can see. So what we're going to do, we just use a ruler. We place our ruler on the dot where the arrow is pointing, right there to 7. And we measure the distance in a straight line. And as you can see, from there to there, if you have the map in front of you, obviously mine is just enhanced. It's not going to be the same measurement. But the correct answer, if you measure the distance from 6 to 7 on your autophoto map, you will get 9 centimeters. Now remember what I've mentioned earlier. We're working with different formulas because we're working on different maps. In this case, we're working on an autophoto map. Right? So it's 9 centimeters, and they expect us to provide the answer in meters, as you can see. And we worked on the autophoto map. Times 100. And the correct answer will be 9 hundred meters for the power line. Okay, let's quickly move on to our next question. Question 3.1.4. Draw a freehand cross-section from the recreation facility at point F. Now, once again, we need to go and identify where do we find point F. We know it's in block D2, but we don't know if it's on the topographical map or on the autophoto map. So we need to go and have a look at that to point G in block D3. Okay, and indicate F and G on your cross-section. So let's quickly go back to our maps. Okay, on our topographical map, I can identify F, situated over there. And I can identify G, situated in block. F is in block D2, and G is in block D3. 
Now please pay attention, grade 12. As you can see from F to G, so we want to draw a cross section. We want to draw a side profile from F to G. But remember, we're working with a flat surface. But there's keys on the map, and you know them by now, is known as contour lines. As you can see, the contour lines are quite far from each other over here. There's a contour line, there's another one. And G is situated just west of a true station. And you can see the height, 1,382. So immediately we know the contours are increasing from F to G. So we're going uphill from F to G because the contour lines are far from one another and we're moving towards the trick station that you see over there in G where the contour lines are very close to one another. So to go and draw a free end cross section, it's very simple from F to G. And we can see because the contour lines were quite far from one another where we at F and the contour heights were much lower. So we can see there's an increase to G. Okay, so that's the freehand cross section and you had to indicate F and G on it. Now the next question is about intervisibility. Is the recreation facility at F and block D2 intervisible from point G and block D3? So what does it mean? Intervisibility, will we be able to see each other if I'm standing at F and you're standing at G, right? Will there be intervisibility between one another? Now, just a straightforward assumption, you standing over there and I'm standing over here. Yes, there will definitely be intervisibility because we will be able to see each other. Okay, so the correct answer will be yes. If we quickly have a look at question 3.1.6. Calculate the magnetic declination for 2022. Okay, the difference in years is six years and the annual change is nine minutes west. Now, grade 12, very fortunate. Usually they didn't give you the information regarding the annual change and the difference in years. This information was usually found on the map, but I just want to show you where you can find it on the map. It's on the topographical map and it's usually on the side of the map. And there you can see the information being given to you. Okay, you can see the magnetic declination is 24 degrees, 42 minutes. And the map was drawn up in 2016. Each year the annual change was nine minutes west. Now let's quickly go and do the calculation, step by step. So, just to look at it, the magnetic declination, right, we know it was 24 degrees, 42 minutes. Okay, the annual change, we know, is 9 minutes west. Now, grade 12 as soon as the annual change moves west, we know we're going to add the difference in years. When it moves east, we're going to subtract. That's your small formula in magnetic declination. So first of all, we want to check the annual change. They've mentioned it, it's six minutes west every single year. The map was drawn in 2016, so every single year, there was six minutes change. So to go and calculate it, it's 2022 minus 2016, and that gives us six. Now, the annual change for every single year was nine, so it's six times nine, and that gives us 54 minutes because the annual change was nine minutes each year right so we were dealing with 54 minutes another key component over here just remember we're working with degrees and we're working with minutes now remember 
One degree equals 16 minutes. Now, because we're moving west, what are we going to do? We're going to add the 54 to 24 degrees and 42 minutes. So in this case, it's 24 degrees, 42 minutes, plus 54 minutes. Okay. Now, very importantly, obviously, 2 plus 4 gives us 6 minutes. 4 plus 5 gives us 9. Now, we're dealing with 96 minutes. Pay attention. Remember what I've mentioned over here. 1 degree equals 60 minutes. So, in theory, 96 minutes equals 1 degree and 36 minutes. Okay, so that is key, right? So it's one degree and 36 minutes. So if we add 24 degrees, 42 minutes, right? Plus 54 minutes, our final answer is going to be 25 degrees and 36 minutes. Remember, because it was 96 minutes, Right, we add those two together, right, that equals one degree and 36 minutes. And very importantly, just to write there, west of true north. Okay, vitally important. Remember, this is key. One degree equals 60 minutes, or 60 minutes equals one degree. Now let's have a look at our next question. Okay, that's just map book interpretation. Okay, if you look at the first question, 3.2, 3.2.1. The wind that blows during the night and blocks C2 on the autophoto map is what type of wind? So we need to go identify that, right? Key over here, if you look at winds, and we're going back to climate, so we just need to clarify and see block C2 if we have a valley then immediately we can identify our answer so let's just quickly go to block C2 on the autophoto map okay situated C2 as you can see right winds have been blown over there you can clearly see a valley contour lines increasing to that site as well as that site so we have a valley situated in C2 and what's key if we go back to local climate we know immediately during night times what type of breezes do we experience during night times we experience catabatic breezes now if we just go back to the climate section obviously what is catabatic breezes it's the air that moves down slope into the valley. And that's known as catabatic breezes because it happens during night time. Okay. Now, if we quickly have a look at the next question, refer to block D4 in the autophoto map. Now, we know the autophoto is a vertical aerial photograph. The reason why I'm focusing on that is because if we look at the question, which time of the day was the photograph taken? Okay, let's just quickly go back to the autophoto and we need to go and focus on D4. Okay, D4. Okay, grade 12, so quickly pay attention. Pay attention to the shadows of the tree. In which direction are they facing? There's north, there's east, there's south, and there's west. Do you agree with me if you look at the trees over there? The direction of the shadows is in a southwest direction. Now remember, north is on top. The sun, the sun comes up in the east and it goes down in the west. So when has this photo been taken? In the morning, right? Because the sun moves from there all the way to there. So the correct answer will be morning. And the reason for it is because look at the shadows of the tree. It's in a southwest direction. So going back to our question, which time of the day was the photograph taken? 
It's taken in the morning. Give a reason for your answer. Write the shadows falls in a southwesterly directly. Direction. Okay. If you look at question 3.2.3, give a climatological reason for the large numbers of perennial water sources, dams, and furrows found on the topographic map. Now, as you can see, when we looked at the topographical map, we can see the Midmore Dam. And obviously, we can see lots of cultivated land and perennial rivers. Perennial rivers are also known as permanent rivers. And the simple reason why we looked at it receives higher summer rainfall, but definitely the rainfall is seasonal. And the reason why is because there's dams and furrows. So it means they are saving water, storing water for the dry season. Now when we go back to the information that was given to us, and I've highlighted it, they experience warm, wet summers and dry winters. And that's the reason we see so many dams on the map for dry season purposes. Okay. So it's rainfall is seasonal, right? If we quickly continue with question 3.2.4, refer to River H and Block B1 on the topographical map. River H and Block B1 generally flows in the northeasterly direction. Give map evidence to support the answer. Okay, let's quickly go to River H and Block B1. Okay, where you can see the River H. Now, obviously, it makes sense. We can see the river is flowing towards the dam, right? And we can see the contour lines of these shapes as well. So that's our reason, as you can see, River H flowing towards the dam. And we can see that the height is decreasing towards the dam, right? There's a spot height showing us 1,065. As you can see, there's another spot height closer to the dam, obviously, the altitude is decreasing. So we've got a couple of answers that we can use for the question that was mentioned. Just want to get to my question. Okay, so we can mention first, it's flowing towards the dam. And then we can mention the contour lines are decreasing towards the dam. towards the dam. Okay. Now, if you quickly have a look at the next question, give evidence why the type of flow of rivers is associated with laminar flow. Now, we looked at it, the contour lines are quite far from one another. So when we know when we experience laminar flow, it's usually on the gentle gradient. Okay, turbulent flow, usually in the upper course of the rivers where we have a very steep gradient, usually experience vertical erosion. Okay, so we can mention over here, gentle gradient or flat gradient. And how do we know that the contours are spaced out? Okay, so we looked at River H. As we can see, it flows towards the mouth of the river. As you can see, the river is quite wide. And we can see that the contour lines are quite spaced out from one another. So we know it's a gentle gradient. Now, if we look quickly have a look at question 3.2.5, the drainage pattern encircled in blocks C3 and D3 on the topographic map. Let's quickly go and have a look at the Block C3 and D3. C3 and D3. 
Okay, there we can see it's been circled and marked I. All right. Now, as you can see, I'm going to just use my blue colored pen. You can see the drainage pattern. It resembles the branches of a tree. And once again, we're going back to geomorphology, that table with our different drainage patterns. And what resembles the branches of a tree? A dendritic pattern. So that's the correct answer for that question. So let's just quickly go and write it down there. The correct answer is B. Describe the underlying rock structure that's responsible for the drainage pattern. That's one of the characteristics. It's uniform. Rock, and they're usually horizontally layered. Okay. Okay, our next question we focus on GIS. Now let's have a look what the question that the question is being asked. Refer to the photograph below that shows an environmental issue in block C2 on the topographical map. Now when I look at the photo, immediately I can identify soil erosion okay but we need to go and have a look at block c2 the, so the photograph already gave me an answer but let's just see what c2 shows us on the topographical map okay there's c2 immediately if we look at our keys we can see erosion being indicated with the key how do i know that there you go the keys on the bottom, the references that we use on the bottom, and we can see that we experience erosion. Now let's quickly have a look at the questions that's being asked regarding this environmental issue. Which symbol represents the environmental issue depicted in the photograph? That will be D. We identified it on the topographical map already. Now, if you look at the next question, 3.3.2, classify the photograph as either primary or secondary data. It's definitely primary data because the photo was taken in present. So that's the correct answer. If you have a look at question 3.3.3, give a reason for the high resolution of the photograph. Now, you guys should be very well known with this, obviously when you buy a new cell phone, you look at a phone with the best pixel quality to take better selfies, etc. So, the reason why the high resolution is because of the high pixel quality. Pixels being used, enhancing the quality. We have a look at question 3.3.4. How would the high resolution of the photograph assist a GIS specialist to find a solution to an environmental issue being shown? Now, first of all, it's clearly visible, so it definitely helps. You can immediately identify the problem. Can identify the problem. If we quickly have a look at question 3.3.5, refer to the sketch below of the infrastructure data layer in block C3 on the autophoto map. As we can see, we got infrastructure, it shows a road. Let's quickly go identify it on the autophoto, we know it's in C3. C1, C2, and C3. There's the infrastructure that they're talking about. Let me just use a different color pen. That's the road that's been indicated. So we clearly can identify it on the autophoto. Let's have a look at the question that's being asked regarding that.
Identify the missing infrastructure data layer. Exclude it, not indicated in the sketch. Okay, so some infrastructure is missing on this data layer. So we just need to go and have a look in the autophoto map at what we need to go and identify. And if we go back, infrastructure that's missing, clearly I can see a power line that's missing and I can see buildings situated over there. There's one over there and there's one situated over there. So what do they want us to do? We need to go and add those infrastructures to the layer that they provided us with. So first and foremost, what did we identify? We identify the power line and not far away from the road, we identified buildings. Okay. That was missing on this data layer. So we've just done that on our diagram. 3.3.6, using the correct reference symbol, redraw the sketch and insert the infrastructure layer that we've done. We've just added that, so we just need to add over here. It was the power line that was missing and the buildings. So any one of those that we added, as you can see, the power line and the buildings situated just north of the road. 3.4.1. 